Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Thursday, September 21st. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Among the problems that artificial intelligence could solve is helping biologists figure out which of the myriad of variations in a person's genetic code might make them sick. Now, DeepMind, Alphabet's AI subsidiary, has cataloged 71 million genetic mutations in the structures of proteins that could cause disease in the human body. The results were published this week in the journal Science. Here to talk about this development is our Science Bureau Chief Joe Craven McGinty. Joe, for those of us who haven't taken a biology class in a while, what role do these proteins play in our genes and why do mutations matter? So the human body is made of thousands and thousands of different kinds of proteins, and they play a critical role in contributing to the function of all of our tissues and organs. And so the coding of those proteins is important so that the cells can function as they are intended. Are there mutations that people may be familiar with? There are. So for example, sickle cell anemia is caused by a mutation of a protein. Cystic fibrosis is, some cancers are. How does DeepMind's AI model work to find these variations, these mutations? DeepMind developed a language model that evaluated 216 million possible single amino acid changes across more than 19,000 human proteins. When they did that, they predicted that there are 71 million so-called missense variations. These are variations to what they expected in the structure of the proteins. Some of these variations don't cause problems, but some of the mutations do cause disease. And what they were looking for was which of the mutations would cause disease. So finding 71 million of these, that seems like a lot, but is it a very big deal? It is. It's important to remember that they found 71 million variations. Only about 32% of those are likely to cause disease, according to their analysis. About 57% are expected to be benign, and the remainder were not categorized. So in comparison, to do this manually, to observe these sorts of mutations through observation, only about 4 million possible variations had been observed previously, and only 2% of those had been labeled as possibly causing disease. It's expensive and laborious to do that. So what this brings to the table is the ability to quickly analyze these structures and deduce which ones of them might cause problems. Moving forward, and we're not really there yet, but moving forward, the goal is that molecular biologists, clinicians, and other researchers could use this table of mutations and it would facilitate making a diagnosis. So you know you have a patient with a problem, there are certain symptoms, and you can match the protein structures that they have with what's in this table to see if there's an an identified mutation that would help you figure out what the illness is. So it would speed up a diagnosis. And then the second part is that knowing where the issue might lie would help with the development of therapies, drug therapies, treatments, and other ways to help with the, the disease. So AI has really leapfrogged finding all of these things. Has DeepMind done anything like this before? Yes. This project, which is called Alpha Mesense, builds upon a previous project called Alpha Fold. That project was specifically aimed at predicting the structure of proteins. So it created 3D models of millions of proteins. And then they've built upon that by saying, now we know what we believe the structure of these proteins looks like, which ones have variations, which ones might cause disease. What happens now that they've identified these? I mean, you've said they could help in the future, but what's the next step? They have made their database publicly available, and they hope people will use it. And when people use it, they'll, of course, continue to refine the information. But it should be, they hope, an exchange. They've put it out there. People will use it, hopefully benefit from it, and they'll build upon the learning moving forward. Outside researchers who have looked at this project caution that these computational predictors are not yet reliable enough to be used alone for genetic diagnoses, but they do say they show a lot of promise and think that in the future, even more will be possible. And we're talking about people who are researchers, biologists, scientists who are going to use this. 
for everyday people, is this, you know, an AI use that could actually affect their lives? If it is successful in leading the way to make diagnoses faster, more accurate, to lead to therapies that can potentially cure life-threatening diseases, that's when it will make a difference to regular people. All right. That was our Science Bureau Chief, Joe Craven McGinty. Thanks for joining us, Joe. Thank you. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by Julie Chang with supervising producer Melanie Roy. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening.